Hey everyone. Last week, I created a video on Azure Stack HCI, walking through what it was, when I would use it, the overall experience. And some of the feedback I got was, well, can you show us just how Azure integrated the experience is? Because one of the huge features is it's really extending Azure to your edge. And most of the setup, all of the management, I'm doing through Azure. So huge thanks to the product group. They're actually letting me play and walk through a complete install from start to finish. And so that's what I wanna do in this video. To stress the initial point, use the documentation. It's very thorough. We can see over here, it has details on every single step. There's some preparation for the Active Directory getting the operating system on it, registering with Arc, then actually doing the deployment and creating of the cluster. Make sure you've got those prerequisites complete. Make sure you know the information you're gonna need. It walks through in huge detail every single thing you want to do. So you need to make sure you've gone through, uh, done all that preparation. Now, in this environment, what I have here, just minimize that for a second, is I have a subscription. Now I'm contributor on the subscription and then on this resource group where I'm gonna to deploy to and where the resources will get created, I have the key vault administrator role. I need that as well. And again, the documentation will walk through this at the right point, but just know I have those permissions. So contributor on the subscription, then that key vault admin on the resource group itself. And as you can see, right now it is completely empty. So the step one is I have to create objects in my Active Directory. Now the machines, you can see I've got two machines and as we can see, they are work group. I have not joined them to the domain. So one of the mistakes I made in my actual how-to video before the overview was, hey, join them. You do not join them to the domain. The process is gonna join it to the domain. So they are just work group joined, but they do have the Azure Stack HCI operating system on them. Now, maybe you have downloaded that and you have installed it and done the various preps for that. Maybe it came delivered from your vendor, more of a white glove and it's got the OS already, but I've just got these two boxes that nothing else has been done. But we can see they have computer names and in Active Directory, I need to do a little bit of preparation just to create the objects and create um, an account that's gonna be privileged for the deployment of this HCI cluster. And what I'm gonna do, rather than having to type out every command, I've got a list of commands I'm gonna do. So we're gonna to have to install a module, and then basically we're going through and we're specifying, we're gonna create a new credential, and then what we're gonna specify is the OU, we want to create it in, and then we're gonna list out the node names. We can see here we're getting that credential that I'm just gonna type in. You could obviously use an object to do that as well. I'm specifying the domain fully qualified domain name, the cluster name I want to use, what the prefixes will be on all of them. So I'm just putting in some really just core details around that environment. So those are the two commands that I need to run on the domain controller. So if I grab those and cut and paste, so on my DC, we'll run that command. So that's installing the module. Now in the documentation, it talks about also downloading a PSM1 file from GitHub. You don't need to do that. It's one of the two commands. In here, I'm just installing the module. Um, so yes, I want this to continue to go and be able to install that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and run that command. And that command is gonna go ahead and create that organizational unit and then create the required objects. So here, now again, it is prompting me for the credential that I'm gonna use. So this credential is gonna be used for the setup of the cluster. So let's just go over here. And it will still be a privileged for HCI domain account. I'm not gonna use it much once the cluster creation is complete but potentially if there were problems, if I was troubleshooting something, maybe I would use it then. So it's going through and it's finished already. And what I can see is if I actually jump over and look over here, if I refresh, 
it's created that OU and it created uh, computers and users. And if I look at the computers, and let's actually go ahead and zoom in there so you can see it. So again, it created the organizational unit that I specified. It created computers and users, child OUs. Then it's gone ahead and created an object for each of the machines. And then that cluster object for the cluster is going to create. And that's my work on the domain controller done. Like that's it. The domain preparation is now complete. So then the next set of steps is on the HCI nodes themselves. Now I'm only gonna run through it on one of the nodes, but I'm gonna to have to do it on each of them. So the key point is that I need to install Hyper-V. So obviously Hyper-V is the hypervisor that's built in. I'm gonna do a quick configuration for WinRM, which is the remote management. I'm gonna enable ICMP so I can ping, confirm connectivity, and I'm gonna restart the computer. So I'm gonna copy that. So in the menu, remember it's server core. So I'm gonna drop down to the command line and then paste those commands in. Now it's gonna prompt me to restart here. And I'm gonna say no, I don't want it to do the restart right now. Do you wanna restart? No. Then it's doing that WinRM quick config. Yes, make those changes. And then sure ahead, I'll go and restart the computer. And that's ended and then Obviously I would then go and do it on the second computer as well. So we'll give that a few minutes and then we will come back. Okay, so both the boxes are back up. So once again, we will now drop down to the command line. And what we're doing now is we're gonna go and install the required modules for Arc. So we can see it's going through getting a registration script from the gallery for the Arc installer, installing some of the core Azure PowerShell modules. The documentation does list this command, but I found it's unnecessary. It's already registered as a trusted repository. Then you're gonna put in your values for subscription, resource group you're using, a tenant, and then we're just gonna go ahead and connect. Now you'll notice we're using the dash device code. This is server core. I have no browser that can pop up a window to enable me to authenticate. So I'm gonna to go to another machine and type in the device code it's going to give me. So we're gonna take these lines and once again, we will just paste them in. So this will now go through, it's pretty quick and get all that installed on the machine. So we said yes to the first prompt and we're saying oh, all, that's the next one. And now it will go through until it's gonna prompt us for that credential. So we're actually doing this connection. We can see, right, it's saying we have to go to a web page, the device login page, and then we have to enter that code. So we'll jump over to here. I'm gonna to need to do this twice, once for each machine. So I'm just gonna open two tabs for that. And then we go back and what is that code that it's giving us? So I can see the code. We'll copy that, paste that in. So we just have to confirm it is for the PowerShell, which it is. And now it's saying, hey, we're signed in. Again, I would need to repeat that for both of my machines. So we have completed that authentication. Now all that's left is we're going to go ahead and get a token that I can use through that credential, uh, get an account ID for the registration, and then we're gonna invoke the ARC initializations. This is gonna go and register these machines with ARC. It's gonna pull down some NuGet packages to go and complete the installation. But this is now going to take the machine and actually add it as a known machine to Azure. It's gonna get it set up with ARC for server operating systems. So we take these commands and we will run them. So this is now gonna go through that complete process. And again, I'm just gonna run it on both of them. So I've been doing the commands on both the machines at the same time, just so we can get them up and going. And this is now it. I will not touch these boxes again. 
everything from this step onwards, I do through the Azure control plane, through the portal, through the CLI, through templates. It's even gonna disable by default RDP. I can still do Windows remote management to these boxes, but everything from this point forwards will be done through Azure. I can re-enable RDP if I really needed to, obviously, because I still have WinRM management to it, but that's it. Everything else, the joining the domain, the creating the cluster, the configuration, I'm gonna do all through Azure. So as you could see, really all we did here was get the base role installed for Hyper-V, we enabled remote management, we let it be out of ping, and then we're deploying Arc to make these communicate to the Azure control plane and let us actually go and do the management. So we're just gonna let these run. It's gonna take uh, a little amount of time. We'll see exactly the amount. But what we can now do is if we go to the Azure portal and I do refresh, it's gonna take a while, but we'll see them show up here as Arc enabled resources. And it's gonna install some extensions. So we will come back uh, once this has shown up. So here we can see it's pulling down the actual agent installa installation. So we can see it's that connected machine agent, which is the core part that enables that ARC connectivity. So we can see it's a look connecting to the ARM access token that we specified. And so I would imagine it would in um, show up pretty quick. We can see the various resource providers that it would need to go ahead and register. Okay, so now what we can see is it has assigned that connected machine resource manager. And we can now see it's starting to talk about extensions. So these, there's three extensions it's gonna install, but this is the first core one, this telemetry and diagnostic extension installation. So at this point, I would expect it to have shown up. There we go. So we can see both those machines are now Arc enabled resources. What we're looking for is if we go to extensions, we wanna see three. So right now we just have the one and even that one is currently uh, still creating. So we're gonna wait until we got all three of these. We're gonna wait for that entire script is finished, but I wanna see all three extensions have shown up and they've all deployed. So that's what we're waiting for. Okay, so we can see one of the machines has finished. We can see also that it had those three extensions that we talked about, the telemetry and diagnostics, device management, and then the LCM controller. And actually I can see the second machine has finished as well. So we can validate that. So if we now go and refresh the extensions I have, now notice one of them is still creating. So I am not gonna go any further until that fully says succeeded. So I'm just gonna chill out. I want those all to be in a good state before we proceed to the next step, which is creating the cluster. Again, remember the key point is I am contributor on the subscription. Also, I have that Azure Key Vault administrator role assignment to this resource group where I'm creating anything. I do need those permissions. So we'll just, and in fact, the reality is by the time I actually get through starting to do the wizard, this would be in a succeeded state anyway. But unless you're in a huge rush, I would rather just wait for all of that to finish. And again, the documentation has full details. So all those commands I run, that, that's all fully documented uh, within there. So it's not like, hey, what did commands I would run? You should look at the documentation because they may update it. You want to use what they are recommending within those docs. So while this is finishing off, what I can uh, do is start filling out uh, the next step. So if we actually open up a new tab, I'll start populating it in here. And so what I'm now gonna do is I'm going to Azure Arc and I would see the machines in here. But I'm gonna to go to Azure Stack HCI. And what we can do is I want to deploy a cluster. So I'm gonna say deploy cluster. Again, I'm not doing anything on the nodes. I'm not connecting to those nodes ever again. I'm gonna specify my resource group. So I've got mine where I'm doing all my work. And then I'm, I have to go ahead and, and enter all the specific details that I want to use for my environment. 
So I, again, it's part of the prerequisites you want to do. You should have all of these configured that you're going to use uh, in your environment. So if I look at my cluster name, I'm just gonna copy and paste a whole bunch of values in here. Got my East US region. I'm going to give it a key vault name. Over here, and you can use the names you want. You just wanna be consistent. I need to go ahead and create a new key vault. And so over here, I'm gonna put in the key vault name I'm gonna use and hit create. And then we've got the servers that we're going to use in our environment. Now, before I do that, let me go back here. Okay, it still says creating. Let's go back out, refresh this. Let's look at my node two. Okay, so that's still saying creating. So I'm gonna wait for that to finish before I go any further. We can see if the validate will work, but it, it may not. Let's see. So as we can see, it's complaining. Um, that extension is not finished, so I just need to be a bit more patient and I'll just come back and wait for that to complete before I try and proceed. Okay, so now it's showing me as succeeded for that node. Let's just come back and check the other one. Again, I'm rushing through this. Normally this timing would not be an issue. I'm sort of blowing through to be as quick as I can. All right, they are both succeeded, both my nodes. So now if I rerun that validate selected servers, I got a tick mark. All right, so I'm good to progress to the next step. So I'm gonna to go to configuration. I'm just gonna do a new configuration. I am doing a no switch for the storage. It's two nodes. They have direct connect cables between, so it's not using network switching. I'm using group management for the compute traffic. For the compute management, I'm using management compute one. And then I have two adapters for this. So my network adapter two will be compute two. And then for my storage, I'm using storage one. And then I have a second adapter, storage two. And I'm just leaving those VLANs alone. I don't need to change that. And then we're gonna allocate the IP addresses um, that we're using for the environment. So again, this is one of the things you would have had um, as part of your prereqs, making sure you've, you've allocated these. So I've got my ranges that I'm just copying and pasting. Nothing particularly exciting here. Okay, so I've completed that. Let's make sure I'm not missing anything else. Nope, so I go to management. Custom location name. So this is when I'm deploying things in Azure. Normally we pick a region. We will pick this name. So I'm gonna pick a name for me. Hey, I'm just using because it's number 12. That's the environment I'm using. I need to create a storage account because it's gonna create a cluster for the Windows servers, it needs a witness. So there's different types of witness supported by Windows clustering. We're gonna use a cloud witness, which so is using an Azure file share. So we're just gonna say, hey, go ahead and create new. And I'm just giving it a name and hit create. And then it's your Active Directory details that you have. So your domain name, the um, computer name prefix that I've configured. Now remember some of these values, obviously this is based in our real AD, we configured these as part of that setup and prep on the domain controller that we ran. We need to make sure we're using exactly the same details. I can't modify this now. So I need to be consistent with those values. And then that deployment account. So remember we created that account this is that same account. So we're specifying that account that we used and it's a password, putting in that here twice. And then what I want my local administrator to be. So once again, I'm just gonna use admin and then it's password. So we're just going through, and again, I'm doing this through the portal, 
obviously realize this is just going through the ARM control plane. I could use a CLI. I don't know if templates are supported yet, but the regular methods I would use, I, I'm going to leverage that. So then security, I'm just going to use the recommended security uh, under advanced. I want to create the workload volumes and required infrastructure, the, the cluster shared volumes that it has to actually store the content. I'm just going to let that do its jobs, put a recommendation. I'm not going to use any tags. Whatever you do, do not jump over and say, oh, I'll do review and create. I must, must do the validation step. Now that caught me the first time. So I need to go to validation because this is actually going to take some time. These sets of validation, I think it took about 15 minutes to go through when I did it previously, when I was testing this out. I have to do this. If I do not do this step, the actual create will fail within a second. So you need to let it go through and do this validation. It's checking all of the core things it has. Without the validation, it will not complete. So let this go through. Basically, I want to stay away from this left corner button and always progress step by step through this button and let each stage finish. It's grayed out. I can't use it yet. That will make sure. So this is just now going through. It's creating all of the different resources. And as it's doing that, interestingly enough, if we jump back over to our resource group, we'll see it creating that storage account. We'll see it's creating that key vault. And we can see it's creating the cluster. So it's creating all of those resources that it needs for that complete deployment. So it's actually really nice. We, we can see that all that stuff in action. And that's why we have to do um, the validation because it's actually going through and it's creating some of the prereqs for the cluster to function. Um, so we just let this go. And again, it's telling me, hey, look, this normally takes about 15 minutes. So we will just be patient. 15 minutes later. Okay, so I can see that now completed. I got success for all the different items, which is good news. If we look at the resources, uh, we've got an extra storage account was created over there. And now I can go ahead and click review and create. Again, it's giving me a summary of all the details and go. Now this can take many, many hours. Uh, I think I've seen sort of two and a half hours is fairly common. You may even see the deployment says failed, but it's just timed out. I think there's a two hour arm window by default and this can take longer than that. The nice thing is I can, let's hit refresh. I think it's 40 to 50 minutes. I'll see this update and it will give me all of the detail of what it's doing. It wouldn't have finished, but I'll start to see a lot more detail. So don't panic that you don't see a lot of activity for a while, but it will update again, 45, whatever around there. And I'll see where it is. And then it'll give me the list of tasks that it's doing but this could easily take a few hours. And the more machines you have, the longer these steps can take. So at this point, there's nothing more for you to do. Uh, you can go and grab a beverage, go for a walk, um, get on with other things. And we'll come back to this, maybe in sort of 40, 50 minutes when it's got some of the update and I can show you. And then we'll just wait uh, until it completes. It's showing me the tasks now for what it will be doing. There's no update. Again, that the update, I think that's the 40, 50 minutes, but it is at least showing me all of the things it's gonna do. One hour later. Okay, so it's been about an hour and we can see it's actually gone through and started to complete and update the status. So for example, we can see, look, it joined the servers to the domain. The just enough administration endpoints have been created. Now it's actually going ahead and creating that cluster. It's going to go through and configure all the networking, the cluster shared volumes, the encryption, really just all of the different detail. And I think there's some updates along the way now, but I'm just going to come back all the way at the end. But it is good to go and see everything it's doing. For example, I can see, look, it's going to deploy the Arc infrastructure, i.e. the resource bridge, which is that bigger ongoing capability for the other types of workloads uh, I may run in there. I'm going to see all these different steps. And right now we're just gonna let it run all the way through and we'll come back at the end. 90 minutes later. Okay, so it has all finished. 
we can see all of it. We have all of these successes, which is fantastic. If we were to go and look at the resources, make sure that is refreshed. We can see we ha have the Azure Stack HCI cluster. We have the resource bridge was deployed. We have our custom location was created, which is what we'll use when we want to go and create resources to target that set of infrastructure. Of course, we have the nodes, we have the key vault, and we have the storage paths that it's added. And so now I just want to use it. So it's all ready to go. Now, if we go and look at our cluster, so we're actually looking at our Azure Stack HCI cluster. Now what we have by default are storage paths. So it's cluster shared volumes, which is where I'm taking the local disks, but using SMB, I'm exposing them across the entire cluster. So then I can move workloads, VMs between nodes, and they're still gonna function. But, well, I need an image and I need networking. So the first thing I'm just gonna kick off is I want some VM images. Now I can create these a number of different ways, but for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and grab one from the Azure Marketplace. This is gonna go and download it from the Marketplace and make it available on that cluster. So I'm just gonna say, uh, well, let's pick the image. So we'll see the ones available in the Marketplace. So I will just do core. So we'll do a, so if it's given me a name there, it's using my custom location. The default storage path is fine. Just go through. So we can see it passed the validation and I can just go ahead and hit create. So that's then gonna go and start downloading that image. So I can now close that away and go back to my uh, Azure Stack HCI. And if I was to look at my images, at a certain point it'll start showing it and it will show it as downloading. Um, so we will see it and it will, we'll be able to see a progress. Now, what I also have to have is the networking, because remember, this is running on our edge where I have my layer two, my VLANs, and I want to integrate. As I mentioned, it's not using software defined networking today. I'm integrating in with my networking. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is if I go to logical networks, I'm going to create one. So I'm going to create a new logical network. I'm creating it in my resource group and I'm just going to give it a name. Uh, I'm just going to call it my default. It doesn't really matter. Now the virtual switch name, this I could go and do, for example, I think a git vm switch command to actually check it, but this is the actual name that has been used in my deployment. So I have to be super specific and in my environment, that is the correct name. For my network configuration, I'm just gonna use DHCP. If I wanted this to be tied to a certain layer two VLAN, I could specify it here. I don't need to. Again, we can look at the tags and then we'll go to our review and create. And again, it's gonna go and do that validate. Let that finish. And it's running all the validations they've passed. I'll just go ahead and hit create. So now it's going and creating that network as well. If I go and look at my status of what's going on, so I can see I've got those deployments um, right now. Let's close that down. So it's created the logical network. Go back to that cluster. So now I've got a logical network, great, which I could now leverage. Again, I'd give it a more useful name. For my VM image, I can see it's currently downloading. So I need to wait for that to finish. But they're really the core components that I need to add to be able to go and create the virtual machine. Storage paths, as I mentioned, they're there already. The NIC will just get added when I'm going and creating this through the portal. Now, depending on the method you use for the creation, there may be different steps. The documentation does walk through all of this, but once this finishes downloading, I'll be ready to go ahead and just create the virtual machine. So now it's actually showing me the status, so it's at 4%. So I will come back in a second. 
Okay, so I got notification popped up that the resource had deployed. So we can now see it's available. So I have an image, I have a network, and I have a storage path. All of the things I need to go and create a virtual machine. So at this point, if I to actually look at my virtual machines here, we don't have any. I could go ahead and create VM, but what I'm gonna do instead of creating it here, if we just go back to our main location, I'm just gonna go home, virtual machines, create. Now in the create, what we're looking at right now is this option for more VMs and related solutions. And once again, I'm using the portal, but this is just going through the control plane. I could use other commands, we have to use templates, etc. So I want to create an Azure Arc virtual machine. And I'll just pick my regular resource group. And the key thing here is, remember for my custom location is to pick the location I created that represents this particular HCI cluster. So I've picked that, I do have to give it a name, so I'll call it test one. It knows because I created my custom location, it knows that it's Azure Stack HCI. I can go ahead and pick the security type, I'm just gonna do standard. I'll see the image that I created, that I remember I downloaded from the gallery. I can pick information around the number of virtual CPUs, the amount of memory I need, guest management, I have to put in an administrator, a local password. I could do things like join it to the domain. I could add additional data disks beyond the OS disk that's gonna get created if I wanted to. I can go ahead and add a network interface and I give it a name. So it's gonna be test nick one. I'll see the network. I only created the one, so I'll just see my default. Click add, it's now I'm gonna have that network. I could once again add tags as I can with any other Azure resource. It's just part of the metadata of resources. The review and create. Notice I could download a template. Again, regular Azure resource manager, nothing special I have to do here. And I'll hit create. So now it's gonna go ahead and submit that deployment and we'll let that go ahead and run. Now, that's what I wanted to show as part of this. Now, that's one of the types of resources I could do. As we'll also see, if I go back to kind of my overview, uh, there's other types of resource like Azure Virtual Desktop I can have. I can use uh, the auto-manage capabilities in here. But I could also have Kubernetes. So I could deploy Azure Kubernetes clusters to this environment as well. So what I'm gonna do is I will actually go back to Arc. We see we have Kubernetes clusters. So I'm down here in the menu. And I can just go ahead and say, look, I would just want to add a Kubernetes cluster with Azure Arc. And once again, I would pick that custom location I have and go through that complete setup. Now I'm not gonna go through all of that, but I could deploy an AKS cluster and then deploy my Kubernetes based workloads to it, just like everything else. So my, I wonder if my VM is, is cranking along. So it's still completing that. But the key win here is from Azure's control plane, I'm now doing all of the management. I created the cluster. Remember, what did I actually have to do on the boxes? I had to create a few objects in the Active Directory for the computer and that account. There were a couple of groups, an object for the cluster. On the nodes, I just had to install Hyper-V, enable remote management, ping capability, and then Arc enable it. So it was talking to the Azure Resource Manager and everything else was then done from Azure, creating the cluster. And now you can see I could light up creating the different types of resources. And so it really is just taking Azure and extending it to the edge. Going forward, all of the lifecycle management of that infrastructure, the servicing will all be done through Azure. I could do, I guess, bits of this before, but it would all be very manual. You as a customer will be on the hook for actually the management and keeping it all up to date. Now I've just extended Azure to my edge. 
So as always, I hope that was useful. I hope you can actually now see just how much Azure this really is. It's Azure Stack HCI, minimal stuff I have to do outside of Azure. But as soon as those nodes are known, it, it's just all done through that Azure control plane. So when I need Azure services on my distributed edge, uh, this is gonna be that go-to solution. So always, I hope this was useful. Till next video, take care. And just to prove it did finish, uh, there it is. It all succeeded. And if we go to the resource, there is my shiny virtual machine.